The Talmud teaches us that when a person engages in Lashon Hara, in gossip, especially malicious gossip, three people are injured. The first is obvious, the person about whom the gossip is told. The second person is the person who hears the gossip, and the third person injured is the person who relates the gossip. Good Shabbos to everyone. I hope this pre-Shabbat video finds you and your family healthy and safe and enjoying this beautiful Friday afternoon. The talk ahead of this year's Oscar Awards ceremony was mostly focused on the degree to which the spotlight would be on the war in the Ukraine and whether President Zelensky would be invited to address the audience. Of course, the conversation quickly turned after that very public altercation between Chris Rock and Will Smith, and it overshadowed the events on the other side of the world. Maybe the news from the Ukraine has become just too heavy for us to bear, and we needed a supermarket tabloid-worthy diversion. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, then you've probably been hiding under a rock, so you can go Google the details. I won't review them here. But the conversation that has gripped America all week long actually has a direct link to this week's Parsha, the Parsha of Tazria. Tazria is not for the squeamish or the faint of heart. It describes a physical malady in great detail, sarat, often mistranslated as leprosy, which appears as a blemish on the skin. Later, the Torah will describe a similar discoloration that adheres to the stones of a person's house. From the perspective of the Torah, the condition is, at its root, a spiritual disorder. The afflicted person is segregated from the community, but their treatment is overseen by the Kohen, the priest, who examines the blemish and ultimately determines when they can return from their temporary exile. Although the Torah doesn't speak directly to the origins of Tzarat, the rabbis noticed an interesting juxtaposition in the book of Numbers, chapter 12. There we read that Miriam and Aaron, Moses' sister and brother, are speaking about Moses' wife, Sipura, a Kushit woman, often translated as Ethiopian, and their conversation is not complimentary. The force of the passage is that they are speaking behind Moses' back, God is displeased with what they have said, and in verses 8 and 9, God speaks about his special relationship with Moses. And he says, How do you not shrink from speaking against my servant Moses? And then in the very next verse, Miriam is stricken with Sarat, a snow-white blemish covering her body. For the rabbis, the connection between these two events is obvious. The condition of tzarat comes from engaging in gossip. Even the sound of the word mitzorah, a person who has the tzarat, seems to suggest the Hebrew motzi shem ra, someone who brings forth a bad name. It's easy to understand how the person about whom the gossip is told suffers. There may be a loss of rep reputation, uh, embarrassment, or other indignities. To return to the Oscars, one can only imagine the humiliation one would feel having one's physical condition the subject of a cruel joke, not only in front of the hundreds of people present in the hall, but millions of people watching on TV. Telling jokes at another's expense certainly qualifies as Lashon Hara, but what of the one who shares the gossip? How is this person injured? One could easily point to the embarrassment of being slapped across the face in front of the same millions of viewers, but the injury is deeper. The Chofetz Chaim, Rabbi Yisrael Meir Kagan, whose scholarship was centered around the mitzvah of guarding one's tongue, reminds us that while it may feel like we have an unlimited number of things that we can say over our lifetime, the truth is there are a finite number of words that we can utter. Each time we waste the gift of speech on bringing others down is a missed opportunity to better ourselves. As for those who hear gossip about others, they too suffer. The listener may draw faulty conclusions or may, may, might be misled about the subject of the gossip, the person. The consequences might even have uh, business or financial ramifications. But in the case of the Oscars, the danger is even greater because the damage done to reputation and honor serves only to further degrade the level of what has become acceptable in our public discourse. 
Sadly, we have become used to a world in which anything goes, nothing is off limits, whether in political debate or the world of entertainment or even in our schools. Every time that bar is lowered, we all suffer. Maybe, just maybe, this latest example of lowbrow entertainment, the joke itself, the disgusting, violent response, and the way it's dragged all of us through the mud, maybe it will inspire all of us to do better. Wishing everyone a Shabbat Shalom.